Alpha Mike, runway 26, take over discretion to 60 degrees 10. Take it off, Alpha Mike. Hello and welcome to another edition of Cockpit Conversations. My name is Mike Roberts and we've just departed Elstree Airfield, just about six miles to the north of Wembley. And my guest today is an interesting chap, Mark Ween, because he's got a very interesting story because he actually runs a course for people who are scared of flying, and we picked a really bumpy day to do it as well, which which may not be great for you. But first of all, we, we, I mentioned Wembley because you started off doing your um, sort of events career at Wembley. Yeah, correct. Yeah, we actually uh, took over the running a horse of the year show many years ago, uh, and we ran it out of Wembley Stadium. But obviously, uh, they knocked down the stadium. In fact, I was there and watched the arch being built, so it was quite an interesting time. And um, we ended up moving the show up to the NEC, so more into your neck of the woods. Yes. So, and I ran it up there for four years, and then uh, I sold the show, I sold the business uh, back about well, about 12 years ago now. So, um, which is how I ended up going into, ironically, a fear of flying course. So, um, yeah, because you were actually scared of, of flying, or, or I don't know what's what's a nice term for it. Agoraphobic, uh, uh, yeah, but, uh, but, yeah. But but basically, I I had a fear of turbulence, which is ironic given the conditions we're flying in today, because. Um, it's obviously quite bumpy in a small plane, so you feel it much more than you would yeah. if you're in a larger plane. We've got an 18 um, knot wind today up here at the moment, so yeah, you're going to have a yeah, little bit of a few bumps, but, you, but you're cured, you're cured, well, yeah. you well, cured yourself. Yeah, I cured myself, but I cured myself 20 odd years ago. Um, so for me, it was, you know, it was flying commercially in, in jets and not enjoying it, and um, I had to sort of work out how to overcome it. In fact, when I was running Horse of the Year show, I ended up actually skipping a, a trip. Um, we were going to France to actually look at an equestrian act, and um, I just didn't have the uh, I didn't have the confidence to fly that day. And I, I phoned my business partner, but I lied. I was embarrassed that I had a fear of flying. He didn't know anyway. And I just said, "Look, I'm, I'm actually feeling ill today. I'm not going to join you on the flight." And he was going with our ops director at the time, so um, the two of them went and left me behind. And that was the point where I realised I had to do something about my fear of flying because it was affecting my business. It was also affecting my personal life because we weren't going away anywhere. So. Um, you know, I just stopped flying completely for two years. But I, I, I've been building from about the age of 18 to about the age of 30. It just got worse and worse. And then one turbulent flight back from Antigua, and that was it. I was done. So I thought, I'm never flying again. And, and, and that's how it was for a couple of years until I realized, OK, I need to sort this out. I need to understand what it's all about. I need to think differently about this. And um, hence, I sort of overcame it. You mentioned turbulence was the reason why you didn't like flying. But I guess different people have different reasons why they're they don't like flying, is yeah, it, it's sometimes it, it, that? Absolutely, I mean, we get, you know, people have a technical fear. So I had a technical fear, if you want. It was born out of turbulence, but turbulence really was a distrust of the aircraft. And then you get people that have, and, and there could be other technical fears. People have, you know, the, the sounds, they're worried about sounds. They worry that if they hear a ping between the, the cabin crew from front to back, they think it's a secret code from the pilot. So there's lots of reasons why they sort of think, oh, there's something wrong. And, and they're doing what we call filling in the gaps. You know, they're imagining the worst case scenario and they've got this vision going on in their head. So, um, yeah, people have a technical fear and they, they worry about all different things. Um, and then you also have psychological fears. So you have claustrophobia, you know, and those are people, the same people that don't like to get in a lift um, or they struggle sometimes even on public transport. Or so how would you overcome that? Cause that's quite a difficult one to overcome in an aeroplane, I would have thought. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, in one respect, actually, if they overcome in an aeroplane, then it cures everything else. So we've had people come on the course who've overcome their their claustrophobia and then they've immediately got onto a got into a lift so um, in terms of the um, it's, it's more psychological for them so it's, it's giving them some techniques to, to change the way they think um, so my business partner in our fear of flying course with easyjet um, a guy called Lawrence Layton Lawrence and I set up the course I met Lawrence years ago he helped me change the way I was thinking about flying um, and actually we created effectively on the, the EasyJet Fearless Fly course, we created what we call the PATH method, which is a, a psychological and technical hack. So you deal with the psychological and the technical, and with, as far as the psychological is concerned, it's really about giving them techniques to change the way they think, to rewire the brain, to delete the... the there a lot of people have these negative mind movies going on, and they're visualising... You know, when they're going on holiday, they're visualising what's it going to be like, what's the plane going to be like. They've got a vision of them having a panic attack. A lot of people have a fear just of the fear. They, they have a fear of having a panic attack. They may not even have the panic attack, but they've got a fear of having a panic attack. So, but there are techniques that can help you. So, you know, it's a question of just doing that, and then they come and they'll take a flight with us. Yeah. So what's the format of the course on the day itself? 
Well, prior to the course, actually, they, they, they actually have a, an online um, course that they'll watch. So there's, it's 16 modules. Um, it's Lawrence and a senior EasyJet pilot who are actually talking through both sides of you know, the technical and the psychological. And uh, that was interesting. And um, so uh, it's interesting, isn't it? We're, we're doing this in, in quite, quite bumpy conditions, which for me is fine, but it's quite interesting. If I go back 25 years ago, I'd be asking to land right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, we, they watch a course online. It's, it's 16 modules long. Uh, it's about two and a half hours in total. It answers all of the questions they have about any technical fear they might have, and it, they have all these, these techniques to learn on that. We then have a Zoom call with them two days before the flight. Um, so they'll meet the team, we go through everything they need to understand about the course. Um, and then after that we take them on a, on a commercial flight. It's a dedicated flight, you know, intentionally for just for the course. Um, so uh, effectively we'll meet at the airport. We have either, a, uh, EasyJet operate um, the Airbus A319 and A320 aircraft. Um, basically an A319 has 150 seats plus, uh, and then the A320 has 186 seats. Um, and we have a full plane of people, and we will take them up. And, and the, the special thing about the flight is we have an additional pilot with us in the cabin, with us in the cabin, um, and they're giving a full running commentary of what's happening. Right, yeah. So, you know, if you've got a pilot telling you everything's fine, everything's safe, that's what that noise is, that's what that thing is, turbulence is nothing to worry about, etc. It's going to reassure you. So, that, that's the format. Yeah, I, I, I know of people who have, have cured their fears by being on these uh, small planes including one, one lady who's actually been on one of these courses and then gone on to do a loop the loop in a plane. So, I mean, people do it for all sorts of reasons. That's a bit extreme. Um, but it must be so good for people who haven't seen relatives abroad or have never been on a foreign holiday to actually go. You must be so pleased at the end of one uh, of those courses. It's, it's very rewarding. And, you know, you get people that will literally, they'll, they'll be crying with, with joy at the end of it. So, you know, they'll start the course crying because they're not looking forward to it and then they end up actually crying with joy as a result of overcoming the fear. Uh, we had a chap actually, Pablo. Um, Pablo seven years ago came on the course. Uh, he was, uh, he's, he's from Spain but he lives in the UK. His parents still live in Valencia and um, he came on the course. He phoned me beforehand. He didn't think he could even bring himself to come to the ground course, let alone actually take the flight. He, he came on the course having cried his eyes out, you know, not cried, but he came on the course because he was crying on the phone beforehand. You know, I don't even know if I can do this course. Um, and then he, he actually took the course, he was cured, and he's just completed his 300th flight since doing the course. Wow. And that's also helped him with work because he's an architect, so he can, and in fact, one of his jobs was actually to, to actually uh, design an airport. So he's been involved in that, so he's been flying for that. So it's quite ironic that, it, I mean, it's really helped him and helped his career. So uh, certainly it's, it's um, for him, it was life-changing. And we've had people actually take the course who have then actually gone on to become cabin crew. So, you know, it's quite interesting. They've sort of had a fear of flying and now they've actually joined EasyJet as cabin crew. So they're totally cured. But, you know, it can make a difference for families as well because you might have husband and wife where the husband or wife is phobic and they don't want to go away and that's stopping the kids from going away. The kids then inherit that fear from the parent. So there's all of that going on as well. So it, it's, um, for, for people overcoming a fear of flying, it, it opens up the world. It opens up the world to see family, it opens up the world with their careers. They could change careers. A lot of people are held back on their careers because of it. So there's there's an awful lot to, to be achieved, if you want, in life, if you can overcome your fear of flying. Yeah. And I guess because you're associated with, with EasyJet, it must be great for that for their brand to, to have cured somebody of their one of their biggest fears in life. I guess people get very loyal to EasyJet. Absolutely. I mean, look, I mean, I'm loyal to EasyJet. I know I work with them, but I love flying with them. Um, you know, it's, it's a great airline. That we know a lot of the crew anyway, and they're such lovely people. Um, but yes, I mean, people who overcome their fear of flying with EasyJet do become brand loyal. Um, you know, EasyJet is a caring airline. They're there, the, the, the courses exist to help their passengers feel more comfortable. That's what they want to do. Um, and to help everybody enjoy air travel, you know. So, so from that point of view, um, yeah, it's, uh, well, big bump today. <laughs> I thought it was a bumpy day. Yeah, it's fine. But yeah, it's... Uh, you don't, and interesting in a commercial airline, you know, you, you wouldn't notice that. You'd be straight through it. You'd be cutting through it like a knife. But yeah. obviously, when you're in a smaller plane, you, the, the, the uh, I suppose the bumps feel bigger than they are. Yeah. And, and again, that's what we tell everybody. You know, look, at the end of the day, there's thousands of feet of air under you keeping you up, and this is the physics of it that people don't understand. So, you know, when I go back to my days, I wouldn't have understood that. I'd be thinking, oh, that's it. You know, we're hitting a bump. We're going to keep going down. You know, that that's the sensation you yeah. get if you don't know. Do you think the pandemic is? is 
affected some people because if, they, if they've got this fear and they've suddenly been away from it for two years and also the, all the stories in the media about there being massive queues where they can get more anxious, has the pandemic affected things, you think? I, I think it's affected, if, if you were nervous already, I think that's the point. I mean, you know, confident flyers are always going to be confident flyers. But I think if you have any form of anxiety and, you know, lots of people, there's about one in, one in six people have a fear of flying. So it, it's quite, you know, it's quite a, a lot of people. So if you get on a plane, it, it's very likely there's going to be people sat there quietly uncomfortable. Um, now, obviously, some of those people come to us, which is great, and we get them to be very confident. So I think with the pandemic and people not flying for a couple of years, I think some people became uh, have become more uncomfortable with it than they would have been. When you do something regularly, if you ride a bike, you know, if you're even a bit wobbly, you'll be fine because you're keeping your practice going. And one of the things we say to people when they come on the course is, look, you need to keep flying. That's the key. You're going to build your confidence if you do keep flying. Quite often you see people um, first thing in the morning having a drink before they get on the, the aircraft, especially if it's a stag do or something like that. Uh, and also people, you know, it's popping pills to, to, you know, to, to fly. Is that a good thing? Is that a good outcome, no, you think? No, no. I, I mean, we call it a dice pan sandwich. You know, some people do that just to fly, and um, that, that's not a great way to arrive anywhere. You know, it's also going to inhibit your ability to drive. I mean, if you're drinking, you can't then drive when you get to your destination. So, um, no, I mean, obviously, we, we're very keen to stop people doing that. You know, people ask me, oh, I, I take... Um, I take diazepam, can I bring it with me? I said, look, bring it with, but don't take it because you're defeating the purpose of what you're doing. You know, we want you to actually learn to enjoy flying without actually having to have any masking effect because if you take diazepam and you have a good flight with us, you're going to think it's the diazepam, and it's not. It's because you're actually feeling more confident because of everything you've learned and because you're actually understanding what's going on with the aircraft. Elstree, hello again. Uh, Golf Tango, Foxtrot, Alpha Mike, uh, to the west uh, for rejoin. Tango, Foxtrot, Alpha Mike, Elstree, hello, 26 left, QFP 1002. How do you want to join? Uh, 26 left hand, 1002, and if possible, then left hand downwind for 26. Now, flight report downwind, so just one in the circuit on the climb out. I will go, I have mine. So, you must have had some funny stories while you've been doing these these courses. Anything that comes to mind? Yeah, there, well, there's, there's one actually. It was our, our very first course, funny enough. It was about 10 years ago, and um, we were flying out of Bristol, and uh, we'd, we'd closed up, and everyone was sat on board, everyone was nice and relaxed, and I've just found an empty seat halfway along the plane. And I sat next to a married couple there and um, I was chatting to them and didn't think anything of it. And then basically as we pulled onto the runway, she took out a Mars bar and started eating a Mars bar. So she seemed quite relaxed. So I said to her, oh, nothing like a Mars bar to overcome a fear of flying. She said, I haven't got a fear of flying. I said, really? I said, well, what do you mean I've got a fear of flying? It's a fear of flying course. She said, no, I've got a fear of flying. We live locally. And actually it was our anniversary this weekend and we actually have a place in Spain. But I couldn't fly to Spain because we were too busy, but we wanted to go flying. We both love flying. So we saw your course and thought it was a lovely way to actually fly over, over Bristol. So uh, they came on the flight. So traffic, one o'clock. Alpha Mike, traffic for you. Be a Dauphin helicopter departing out over the reservoir to the south and staying low level to avoid. Uh, copy traffic and looking, thanks, Alpha Mike. So anyway, I obviously moved seat because they didn't need me at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds to me like he, he was a bit of a, sh a cheapskate and uh, Perhaps. and I wonder if they're still married, that's what I want to know. <laughs> Perhaps, who knows. Uh, golf Alpha Mike is final 26 to land. Alpha Mike, check the greens, runway 26, land your discretion, instant wind 26, zero degrees, one, two knots. Yep, three greens, thanks, and land 26 Alpha Mike. Well, thanks again, Mark, for... Uh, the the, uh, visual Alpha Mike. Well, thanks again, Mark, for uh, joining us, and uh, keep up the, the great work. It's great to think of those, what, 10,000 people that you've helped? Over 10,000 in yeah. the UK, and, and more globally as well, because they can get it, access to it online uh, in Europe as well. Well, keep up the good, good work, and uh, let me try, try and get, even though it's a bit windy today, a decent landing for you at least. That'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. If it's not, I can just blame it on the wind Fine. And, the and the helicopter. Traffic, one o'clock, same altitude, less than one mile. If you'd like to know more about the Fearless Flyer courses across the country and online, check out fearlessflyer.easyjet.com. And happy landings. Yeah, not as smooth this one in the world, but it's the wind. Well, it's, it's the wind. Caution, under speed. Better than I'd have done. Watch out for Mike, thanks. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so we can let you know where we're heading off to next and who we're going to meet. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Cockpit Conversations and thanks for watching.